I'm going to zoom out so you can see my whole page. I'm pumped I can fit it all on here. Um, okay, drawing three. Here's another thing to really tune in um, that I haven't really talked to you about, but I'm, I'm sure I've talked to you about it if you, you know in previous drawing classes. Figuring out the dimensions is really important for being able to be accurate with your um, overall drawing and composition. So I'm just quickly taking some measurements here. And so I'm going to say it's 7 by, and my orientation will be a portrait orientation, 7 by 10 and a half. I'm actually going to go 11, because remember how I'm telling you I'm going to add a little more information on the bottom? So I'm going to go 7 by 11, and I'm going to see if I can, I don't see how my paper is bigger than my reference photo, so I want to do like a one and a half a multiplication, like making it a little bit bigger, and I do that with a calculator. times 7 by 1.5, that's going to be 10 and a half, 11 times 1.5 by 16 and a half. Let's see. Yep, I've got room there. Okay, perfect. Drawing three, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Does this make sense? How I, my my reference photo is seven and in, seven inches by eleven, and then I times it by one and a half because I wanted to make it bigger. So now it's ten and a half by sixteen and a half. Simple math. So then get so that I have accurate proportions. And that's also going to give me a little bit more of a narrow width. That's longer rectangular. You know, just when you're taking proportion into consideration. That is important. So, just pointing out my math skills. They're real strong. That's, a, you know, doing that and then like baking with fractions. That's about it. For me. All right. So now I'm going to just very lightly create. This is when I need a bigger demo table so I can have stuff further away from me. Create. Just a real light line, so I know my perimeter. I'm actually going to move it down. I am. I'm going to move it down. Gotta love vine charcoal. You can kind of get rid of it. And I'm going to do a little bit of better job centering it. So, drawing 3-2. I, I know I've talked about it, but I want to really point it out. You want to leave some breathing room around your drawing. You don't want to have your drawing go all the way to the edge of the paper. So nobody's doing that, right? Because, like, if, let's say you love this so much and you want to mat it and frame it, if you have your composition going all the way to the edge of your paper, you're going to have to, like, lose some of it because of where the mat needs to sit. So just be um, thinking about that when you are um, kind of initially sketching out your dimensions. Can I try and go get this photo to send? Yes, so where you're going to have to go is kind of by the upper common, um, the doors. Okay. We do not get Wi-Fi in here. Yeah, no, I'm trying to get reference on it. And it's like a blessing and a curse. Like I'm not mad about it, but it does make it hard to get access to photos. I have learned that. All right. And vine charcoal is very compatible with um, chalk pastel so that's why I gave that to you to use to kind of do your gesture sketching so this is kind of going back to week one in that short little week two so here now is my can you see it on there I think you can oh yeah you can see it better on the screen so I've got my dimensions all set and then I am gonna go in and I'm going to kind of measure out like to create like a, a rule of thirds grid that then I'm going to use 
Actually, I think I might not do rule of thirds. I think I might do kind of half and half. So I'm going to go like that. I'm going to use this one instead. I like it better because it's a little. All right, and then I'm going to go down on the bottom here and kind of mark out that half spot. So I'm dividing my um, reference photo in halves. So 10 and a half, half a 10 half, five and a quarter. All right, now I'm, so I, I measured and I marked on, on the court, on the middle of each side. And now I'm drawing a line across real lightly. So then I'll have my composition divided in halves. Oops, and then I drew on my drawing. Nice work. So again, I just divided mine into four equal parts. And I'm going to do that on my, um, on my final paper. And that's just going to kind of allow me to make sure I'm saving space for everything and putting it where it needs to be. You could do a super, you could do a more detailed grid. Um, and I do have videos to support that if you would want to watch them. Ha have any of you ever drawn using a grid? Okay. And it's like, it may be your style and some people like really rely on it. I would say I don't so much. I'm a little bit more of like I feel comfortable just doing the gesture sketching and then maybe redoing some stuff. So it's totally up to you. Um, you're in a level three, so you get to kind of navigate that the best that you, you know, best to your abilities. Um, all right, so I am. What's that?
So it's a hundred percent originality. It's all yours. So I think it's great. And then you'll have to decide on a paper. So I'm still kind of doing my measuring. I love it. I love measuring. Okay. Great. And then we'll do it again down, going down here. 16, so that would be eight and a quarter. And then flipping it over here. Two, eight and a quarter. All right, I have enough room on this table. All right, so now I have my half and half. I kind of, kind of can't see that line. And rest assured, this um, vine charcoal, it won't contaminate or stay in your composition. Like, it'll be, uh, it'll be, uh, it'll blend in. All right, so now I'm just starting with my gesture sketching in reference to my grid. So it's like I know her head is going to be about there. Yeah, the drawers are open, so you know, depending on what color, and then I can cut it for you. Again, when you're sketching, like how you hold your body and your arm and shoulder, all of that will impact your mark making. We'll cut it in half so you don't have to draw that big of a picture. Good. All right, ready for me to cut it? Oh, good. Are you? Okay, good. You're just going with... Nice. Okay. My mom had the good, like, 80s, like, Lady Diana haircut here. Do you guys know who that is? Princess Diana. We were big fans of her at our house. So I'm just using that vine charcoal and I am just loosely gesture sketching. lovers, I want to point something out to you. As you build up your layers, those pencil lines will go away. So um, don't be too focused on all the teeny tiny little details because the concept here is to be, um, what am I trying to say? You know, you're going to be going, remember how we're working from the backwards forwards, so the details come last. So just encouraging you to not, you know, turn it into like, the most precious graphite pencil drawing. Like I'm like already going, oh, I want to I want to change that. Now where did my paper towel go? I don't know. Oh, it's right here. So I'm just noticing I like my proportions, I need to change them up a little bit. And I'm just kind of wiping that away. And don't, I'm not worried that I can still see my pencil line. Um, that will go away when I cover it up. Because right. yeah, her thumb goes there. And break the body form down into more geometric shapes. Be less about the real curved organic lines right now and be more kind of around like just squares, rectangles, more tubular shapes. I 
And I realized I didn't, I, when I measure, I'm gonna make this longer because I'm doing that to keep her foot in the. Let's look at it. I'll be right over there. Then now I'm gonna identify for mine. There is a little. There's my horizon line, kind of cuts across her head. I'm trying to decide if I like that or if I should move it up, like you know, so that it isn't kind of competing with the head. But I think I'll just stick with what I got. I should ask my mom, where was she when she was doing her skiing? And I'm gonna put, I'm just sketching in those birch trees that I see that will be fun to draw. So I'm making some background decisions right now. And then there's some little leaves here and then those are her ski poles hi how are you good all right 
and then there's her head, which I will adjust. Okay, anybody at the point where you've got your sketch done? I feel like you are, Lily. Everyone else is still kind of working, and that's fine. This is not a race. Yeah. But um, I'm going to start because of how the physical nature of chalk pastel, it's also good to kind of work like the background and then go towards the details because you have to be mindful of how you move your hand on your paper. 
So some tips could be, as you're getting to a place where you need to make sure your hand isn't rubbing your work away, you could place a piece of paper on top of that area and still not putting a ton of pressure, but then you could keep working and drawing on it. So that's kind of why we recommend working from the back background forward because then it's kind of like once you put those marks down then your your hand isn't really visiting that area anymore and then it just kind of concentrates more on as you move towards the foreground of your drawing so the first thing i'm going to do is i actually am going to pull up the colored reference so that i can see kind of what i have going on for background colors because i'm going to address my background first trying to remember no it must be in here somewhere maybe it's on my computer i really need to address that with my browns that I have here. So I'm just taking the side of my brown comp compressed, um, not compressed, see I just go back and forth on my mediums I work with, not charcoal, but just using the side of my chalk pastel. There, I got the word out. And I'm just kind of putting down that layer one there. And I'm not going to put a ton of details into my background because that's not where my focus is going to be. But I need to fill it. And I'm going to leave some of the blue of the paper because I just think that'll work out fine. So now I'm just kind of filling that in. I am avoiding going over where I marked my trees. Um, But see, I go right over the vine charcoal and it disappears. All right, I'm going to do a little tap. Okay, and then I'm going to put, I'm going to take the dark um, blue and I'm going to just kind of rub that towards the bottom of my wood scene here. I'm not going to go all the way up to the top, but I'm going to keep this pretty abstract because it's also, okay, a photography term. There's like a more shallow depth of field, so the background is a bit out of focus. And um, another technical detail is called atmospheric perspective. So in the world of vision and light travel, blue, the color blue travels the furthest. Um, and so objects that go off into the background become cooler tone, they become less in focus. So I'm keeping this pretty abstract. All right, leaving that there. And then, I know I said gray, but I think I'm gonna just leave it like that. And now I'm gonna put my birch trees in. Um, and so I just took white right away. I'm paying attention to the tip of my white chalk pastel to make sure that it isn't um, contaminated with red I'm seeing right now. And now I'm gonna put that white right on top of the trees that are kind of going across the background there. Okay. 
Okay, and then I got a few more over here. There's like more, but. And I might come and give a little more details, but I'm just leaving it like that for now. Um, I'll tap off my excess. Then I'm going to grab that dark blue again to add some of those details to my trees, which I think I can make this tree a little bit more. I've got a lot of white snow I'm going to add too, but I'll do that next. Um, so I am looking at my tree and I'm going to kind of identify, I don't have a strong light source in my reference photo, so I am going, it's pretty evenly lit, but I am going to kind of say that there's light, the light's kind of hitting, I can see it on my subject's face, there's more, it's brighter toward, like, on the side of the face that's closer to the camera, so I'm going to kind of treat that as like my light source, so then I'm going to make this side of my trees a little darker. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time on the trees. And what will happen is as I create the rest of my drawing, I'll get informed on what I need to do with my background more. So just kind of know that I'll be revisiting this area. Notice I'm not using black. I'm using the dark blue. And then I'll probably go brown on top of that for now. I may add some black. I don't know to the trees, I'm not sure if I will or not, but I definitely want to include but I'm just keeping my background real simple, but instead of adding black, I'm to tone down the, oops, I had the wrong. Trying to get the, actually I'm going to go right to my, for this area, I'm going to go right to my, uh, what are these called, chalk pastel pencils, just to kind of reinforce that darker so it isn't so, doesn't read so blue, so I've got a dark brown, I think this is dark brown, I can't quite tell if it's dark brown or black, it's supposed, I'm intending to be using dark dark brown. Yeah, it is dark brown. All right. Just trying to make these look like birch trees. here okay so I'm gonna count this as like good enough for now so I addressed my furthest background first are you guys kind of catching on to doing that like you, you know so you do make your background choices and then you're gonna work your way towards your subject so my next thing that I'm gonna do is I've got a lot of snow and white happening and so I'm gonna utilize the fact that I've got this cool toned blue paper and um, I'm going to leave some of that visible. So now I'm just adding in some snow. And it does. It goes right over that vine charcoal. Just beautifully. And then I'll include some wispy little areas. You sure me. So I got a lot of white around my subject because Hanging out, just having a really great time cross country skiing. I'm going to walk up close to show you.
the background is so bad, I'm not really, it's not really there to be focused on for very long. It's like smaller. Then I'll keep kind of pulling that white snow around my, and then I think I'm going to go right over that part. Yes, let me write you a pass to the vending machine, just in case. Yeah, let me... 